Hey, Peter. Hey, man. Did you know that Bud Powell was the first jazz musician to walk on the moon? That is unbelievable. Mm. I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you are unbelievably listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice, unbelievably coming at you. We're <laughs> coming at you today from the unbelievably great Sound Slice. Uh, we're brought to you by our sponsor, Sound Slice, an incredible, unbelievable transcribing tool. Go to soundslice.com slash transcribe to check it out for yourself. We use it all the time. I use it on a daily basis uh, for our work here at Open Studio doing transcriptions. It's amazing. I mean, what it can do is truly unbelievable, actually. People will not believe it until they go there. I know, well, let's put it this way. If when I was learning, transcri- transcribing, learning souls growing up, had this tool been available, I wouldn't believe it. I would be like, no, that's not possible. That's why these and kids it wasn't are, back then. <laughs> that's why these kids are playing so great right now. Exactly. You know I mean? <laughs> exactly. Stuff like Sound Slice. Thanks a lot, Sound Slice. Yeah, thanks, Sound Slice. <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about seven unbelievable facts about jazz. Now, you kind of shied away from I came up with this on the airplane You would have known that from our uh, <laughs> foreshadowing, wouldn't you? <laughs> Are we I getting mean, a little too uh, corny up in the No, up in I, I thought this was fun because mm-hmm. I actually, most of these things, I wasn't, well, some of these, I believe them all now. You are on the on the fence on some of these. I'm we, skeptical we, of most of these, honestly. And we briefly only just talked about this. I had this idea, I might have been a little bit oxygen deprived on my commuter jet uh, earlier in the day that I was on. Big shout out to Delta Connection. Um, <laughs> keep on keep on flying. You don't but, hear that in a, in a podcast very often. <laughs> They're next month's sponsor. Yeah, but but this will be fun. So we're going to go with uh, – now I lost them now. Where the, oh, there they are. Seven unbelievable facts. Okay. And I thought – okay, I put up number one. Usually it's like, and you're not going to believe number seven. We do have a bonus one, though. Yeah, you're, you're not going to believe any of you're these. You're not going to believe any of these because they're unbelievable. Number eight, though, is truly the ultimate. Yeah, number eight fact. is the one I'm the most skeptical yeah, of. To that's going to be at the end of the episode. Okay, so number one, though, this one is truly – well, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to say it, and then you can say what you want, Okay. Jazz musicians turn off part of their brain while improvising. Fact or fish, fiction? Well, I mean, we've all, <laughs> we've all uh, intentionally, uh, with the use of some things, turned off our brains <laughs> in order to uh, navigate is, through certain... Well, I'm not talking about that. We're talking oh, about okay, something okay. else. We're talking about an actual... Like changing, I mean, John, okay, this comes from John Hopkins University. I'm not sure if you're, I'm, I'm sorry, John Hopkins Medicine. Oh, you know what? I do believe this because I turn off part of my brain whenever you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is about jazz improvising, buddy, smarty, <laughs> smarty pants. It appears they conclude, and I quote. John Hopkins, from, is that a good school? That's a pretty good school. Okay. Hopkinsmedicine.org. Right. Anything that ends with .org is legit. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> questionable too. So there's the whole article. We'll link to it here because it's actually... Super interesting, but they studied, they did some joint research and studied uh, using MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and um, musician volunteers from Peabody Institute, did where I our s- friend Sean Jones is the head did of Did I see this? There was like, uh, they had like keyboards in the MRI and they were yep. playing some stuff, like mini so. controllers? Wow. It appears, they conclude, that jazz musicians create their unique improvised riffs by turning off inhibition and turning up creativity. And then it goes on to explain the different parts of our brain that, that kind of control those areas. Obviously, there's not an area that's labeled inhibition, but it's like prefrontal lobe or whatever. But if you think about this, this kind of makes sense, right? Sure. I yeah, mean, yeah. how do we improvise? Um, we, we, you have to turn off your inhibition. You know, just like yeah. when you're speaking, if you're going to improvise and get up, if you're inhibited, it's going to come out contrived. You're going to freeze up. Fear is going to take over. Well, we've all had that experience too where you feel a little bit inhibited. Maybe it's like you're... You know, you're you're just starting to play out, or you're nervous, or there's a there's a killing jazz musician that just walked a room, and maybe you feel a little nervous. That yep. inhibition comes out in your playing. You got to get over that hump for yep. sure. Yeah, it's not hump day, by the way. It's it July, is not. Okay, July yeah, 4th. Oh, so. I was getting excited there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, today's July fourth. Is it July fourth or fifth today, Andrew? Fourth. It's the fourth. It's the fourth oh. July. Hey, that's an unbelievable fact about this show that we missed that. Happy birthday, <laughs> happy, happy birthday, everybody. Okay, so that was number one. Did you believe it now? I'm gonna send you the link. I do actually. I saw some. I believe it was like a you know one of those 60 minutes or okay. Dateline or something right. on it. Yeah. Number two. No one knows the origin of the word jazz. Now we are gonna get some entomologists <laughs> writing in. Right. Right. But that actually, but I think that they they're gonna be conflicting. And that's the whole thing. From what I was reading and what I've always heard, um, people that have researched this, there's various different 
and I guess this is true with other words too, there's kind of divergent views on how these words came to be used yeah. and even how they were formed and spelled and all these things. But as far as we could tell with the research department of the You'll Hear It podcast, which is very limited and yeah. underfunded, I might add. For sure. Uh, <laughs> there is no consensus among the entomologists on the origins. Now, There's some very unsavory versions, oh my of God, course. I could only imagine. Yeah. Now, didn't it come from the word, like, jazz, with two S's? And Because I love this, because jazz musicians will make fun of jazz. You know, like, <laughs> it's any less weird than jazz is. Like, it's... Yeah, but that's Like, not the Z's that, made it classier or something. Right. You know? Well, that, I think there is agreement that it came from the, that word, but then no one really knows even originally where that came from, too, Crazy. Is, I believe wow. what it is. All and right. then there's some whole thing. I was reading this whole kind of, you know... Uh, sub sub situation about where it came from some kind of play in on baseball in the 1880s really they used to say jazz the ball or something yeah i don't know huh yeah there you go all right i mean i kind of i, I kind of buy that okay it's such an ambiguous ambiguous weird word yep now number three is jazz increases your immunity yeah. are seven unbelievable facts about jazz yeah this one is not to be believed for yeah sure. well well this okay this one i don't Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm I have all... the article up right here. Yeah. And there are a bunch of stock photos <laughs> of like attractive people with <laughs> headphones on. Yeah. And I'm like this. And it's from a it's from bustle. Bustle.com. Bustle it's not bustle.org. So that does scare me a little bit. But look at those attractive people in there. I'm None calling. of them look sick. None of them look like they're listening to jazz. I'll tell you that much right now. None of those people. Are but listening. they also look like their immune system is is boost. The title of this. Oh yeah, she's definitely checking out Dave Douglas right here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. And then the next is C Cecil Taylor for sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, so should we link to this one too, or are we giving out? Yeah, we, we, you know what? We're going to link to both these. So the idea of this, the, the headline is: Can music help you get over a cold? Studies suggest it can boost your immune system, but the studies seem kind of legit, don't you think? I haven't read all the studies, to be honest. <laughs> you can't I'm, get over the bustle.com. It's from Su Sussex University. Researchers from Sussex University. You know, everything with a British accent means it's legit. And the Max Planck Institute in Germany. My uh, grandfather actually did research with Max Planck, Fritz London. That's for real. So he's okay. legit. It was conducted in 2008, study of the impact of music on the immune system. 300 participants listened to either 50 minutes of upbeat dance music or in the control group, a random collection of tones. The participants who listened to dance music saw a significant decline in their levels of cortisol in comparison with the control group. Now, I don't know why that said dance music as opposed to jazz. That's kind of thrown. Oh, both jazz and music. Both jazz music and dance music have been shown to increase the level of antibodies in listeners' bodies. In other words, they boost the efficacy of the immune system. I'm seriously skeptical. Bustle.com. Study. Come go. on now. Well, and random is. tones, they're just causing stress in people, making them sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe they gave them the brown tone. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the, was it a puke tone, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, number four of uh, seven unbelievable facts about jazz is that the word hipster Came from jazz musician slang. I believe this because jazz musicians came up with uh, a lot of cool nomenclature. Hot, hot yeah, happening nomenclature yep. as I just exactly. demonstrated. Like hip. So apparently hipster. But this was kind of unbelievable to me because I thought my local barista came up with the word hipster. Well, that was the lifestyle, I guess. No, this is how you describe your local barista. Right. But isn't that cool that we it's got like some hipsters jazz. working for us here now? So we, we, probably we sure do. Got a couple of them. Yeah. But isn't that cool that jazz musicians came up with that? Coming yeah. from the hip, hep cat, yeah. then became hip cat, hipster. Hep hepster. hepster. Hepster, exactly. All right. So you believe it. Finally, we find what we both believe. That's I, good. I do believe that, yeah. Okay. Uh, number five. Um, tell me if you believe this or not. John Coltrane has a church named after him in San Francisco in the Western Edition District. I do believe it because I read, I think it was last year, two years ago, that it, it finally closed. Yeah, the I church, believe it did. The church closed. So yeah. I guess this shouldn't be has it had. But it is unbelievable in the fact that, you know, John Coltrane, who had a very short time on this earth, really, yeah. uh, made such unbelievably uh, memorable and spiritual sounding music. That Oh, so would you say that it's unbelievable that he made incredible music, too? Are you adding no, that to the list? No, it's okay. totally believable because okay, he was a genius. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I love this. I wish I could have gone to that church. I actually went in. I never went for a service, but I bopped in there one day when I was in that, that neighborhood in San Francisco. And they have a big, it was like a painting, I think, or maybe it was a photograph, big above the altar. I mean, some people might see it as a little sacrilegious, but not if you love train. He was right in the right position. Yeah, I'm down. 
So that's, uh, man, we got five down, five of our seven unbelievable facts about jazz. How you feeling? <laughs> I, feel, I feel skeptical. Okay. Still, mostly, yeah. <laughs> Number six. Now, this, I mean, this is, seems, yeah, this is like verifiable. Yeah, this, I don't know if you know about this. I just got hip to, I just got hep to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Reese Europe, who I, I'm ashamed to say I did not know who that what was. What a great name. He, um, well, he did a bunch of unbelievable things. He had a huge, like, orchestra early jazz band called the Hellfighters. It was kind of like a brass band slash orchestra that entirely African-American that, like, performed and fought valiantly in World War I. Crazy. Not World War II, buddy. World War I in Europe. Wow. Another unbelievable part of this is his name was James Europe, <laughs> and they fought in Europe. Uh, and then the most unbelievable and tragic part of this is that he was killed by his drummer. Not surprising. <laughs> and the drummer owed him money when he died. That was <laughs> You don't say. <laughs> That's the believable part. Huh. <laughs> anyway, it's an amazing story. I just learned about this um, recently. I mean, he was he was like a big force in very, very early jazz. I mean, even before jazz or jazz or whatever we call yeah. it, I believe. I feel like, should we write an opera about this guy? I mean, it's, it could be done. It could be done, yeah. But he was an amazing innovator. And then he's like, he's buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Right on. Right there in Virginia, across from... It's dope. From, yeah. I believe that. <laughs> oh, this one you believe? Well, I mean, he's killed by his drummer. Totally believable. <laughs> Got it. All right, well, there you go. That's one, two, three, four, five. Six. I have to count it because I don't believe that we All have... Right, these. Six. Yeah, it was six. Okay, so number seven, our last one. Well, we got we got bonus coming up at the end. So at age 62, Louis Armstrong, you have Louis Armstrong oldest with the number one hit. It's a note. It's not like a, it's not a script, buddy. I mean, just some kind of grammar in that would be very helpful to decipher. He's the ever to have a number one hit. With Hello, Dolly. Yeah. Look now, I don't know go. if that means just up until that point, but I believe it's ever. But now I'm thinking, didn't, um, did somebody else, uh, like Nat King Cole, but he wasn't. Yeah, I don't know if he had a number one hit with his daughter when they did the... But anyway, yeah. I mean, he wasn't... We he was already passed away was, by that point. Yeah, he was yeah. passed away, but he was part of the thing. Yeah, but yeah, Louis Armstrong had a number one hit. With Hello, Dolly. Yeah, and it like knocked out, um, you know, several Beatles songs. Wow. Who were like in their heyday at that time. That's I mean, great. this was like on the pop charts, Billboard pop charts. And he was age 62. He's the oldest up until that point, maybe ever, Man. to have a number one hit. Good for him. That's unbelievable. It is kind of unbelievable. Andrew, do you believe cool. that? Yeah, he believes it. Oh, he believes. Man, yeah. he believes everything we but say. He here. looks it up though beforehand. <laughs> you know it. Cool. So, so that was our seven unbelievable facts about jazz. I think we nailed those. We do, and we have one bonus one. But before we get there, uh, don't forget to visit soundslice.com/slash/transcribe uh, for our YouTube. Uh, watchers too. We're going to put the link there so that you can yep. go check it out. Amazing tool for transcription. And then don't forget, it's America's birthday. Yes. But we're celebrating around here uh, with that our our new course to learn jazz piano. Yes. If you don't know anything about jazz piano, learn America's greatest art form. That's right. That's what we're selling. That's here what. Today. It, that's <laughs> going to be the promotion. We just came up with it. Jazz piano jumpstart. Go to openstudiojazz.com. OpenStudioJazz.com, the brand new site. Brand new site. We have a brand new fast platform. Fast AF. Lightning fast. Unbelievably yes. fast. Unbelievably fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That should have been our seven facts. And for the first 100 customers that sign up for the Jazz Piano Jumpstart at $77, yes. you get a free physical bound workbook that we're going to ship to you for free. That's right. And it accompanies. It's got the practice routines, the wonderful practice routines, yep. the guided practice routines. We tell you what to play exactly. Yeah, we give it to you. And you and then, practice with me. Yeah. And, and look, this is not one of those courses where it's just like, this is a C7 sharp nine. You're going to learn. I mean, you're going to learn a little bit of that, but you're going to learn what the music feels like. I mean, you're a neophyte. You're a novice level, ultra beginner. That's where we come to meet you, but we don't treat you like an idiot. Right? No, we don't. We treat each other like idiots. All but the that's time. just for your amusement. <laughs> <We do. laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what's our? What's our? I mean, this is so unbelievable. This well, yeah, and bonus you, you push this one down because you're like, this is truly ultimate. Well, bonus. just I mean, it you've is. played concerts. Yeah, <laughs> as a jazz musician, <laughs> as a, more as a jazz musician, I think. Ugh. Okay, so this is that the fact this number eight our bonus of our unbelievable facts about jazz. Miles Davis played for six hundred thousand people in 1970 the year of my birth the summer of my birth the same month you know what we're gonna say on my birthday i'm not i'm not sure about that okay. can you look that up andrew isle of Wight concert 1970 see what date that was so miles davis played for 600,000 people at isle of Wight festival in the uk now i'm not talking about he did seven sets 
he played seven nights, two sets a night, and they added all the people up, and it came to six hundred thousand. One talking setting. About, I'm talking about at one concert. There's a wonderful. There's a bunch of pictures from it. There's some video. Actually, I think they did a documentary that he's part of. But it was this big kind of rock festival, and Miles Davis, a jazz musician, a pretty good one, a legit, played for six hundred thousand people, and he was not booed or asked to leave that's the most unbelievable part of it <laughs> this whole thing seems preposterous i know i know uh, i mean did he um did he make a facebook event for it or what how did yeah, he market that's how he that did it. he did exactly we'll talk about that tomorrow yeah well tomorrow you'll hear it